I've mentioned it a few times before, but I love visual novels, and I think it's a shame that they only have a niche following here in the West. While my primary hobby is still gaming, I found that when I come across a good visual novel, it kind of takes over my life for a few days. So I've decided I want to start doing some visual novel content on this channel. I'll still be uploading gaming content first and foremost, but don't be surprised to see visual novel stuff now and again. So that brings us to today's video. I'm going to be reviewing a fairly new visual novel, Sankaku Renai, Love Triangle Trouble. And as always, I apologize in advance for any pronunciation errors. It's a Japanese visual novel with Japanese names and I don't speak Japanese. And for the sake of ease, I'll be referring to the game simply as Sankaku for the remainder of this video. Before I go any further, I'd like to clear up a few things. Firstly, Sankaku does have 18 plus content, though by default the Steam version does not. The developers do offer a free patch to unlock this content. This review will be based on the full, uncensored version of the visual novel. Secondly, as this is a visual novel rather than a traditional game, the structure of this review is necessarily going to be a little different, with the bulk of the analysis being on the writing. Don't worry, this will still be spoiler free, but I'm going to go a bit more in depth on the writing than I would in a game review. So with all that rambling out of the way, let's get started. Sankaku is a romantic comedy, emphasis on comedy, visual novel that had its English release in May 2019. It was developed by Asa Project and published by... Uh, Neko Nyan Limited. Great company name, guys. To start things off, let's quickly go over the technical stuff. Now, obviously, since this is a visual novel rather than a game, the system requirements are basically non-existent. If you can turn on your PC without it exploding, you can probably run Sankaku, and I'm happy to announce that I encountered exactly zero crashes, freezes, or noticeable bugs. On to art and music. Like many visual novels, the bulk of Sankaku's visual presentation is with character sprites on top of a static background with CGs interspersed throughout. Obviously, whether or not you, the viewer, like the art is going to come down to personal preference, but I personally like it. In particular, I like the character design. Each character has their own little quirks in their art that I think does a lot in making them all feel unique. Additionally, each character has a lot of facial expressions and poses, more than most of the visual novels I've read, which is something I appreciate. One nice touch is that each character actually carries themselves slightly differently. As far as I can tell, none of the poses are reused between characters. As for the CGs, the most I can really say is that they're pretty good. Again, it's all going to come down to preference, but there's not that much deviation from standard visual novel fare, aside from some minor animations. I do think that this one is really pretty. There are also a few CGs that are a little less realistic and more stylistic. These are done in a more chibi art style and are in general more chaotic, there's just more stuff going on in them. These are mostly used for dramatic or comedic purposes, and I think they work, though I'm glad that they were used relatively sparingly. I felt like the music was good, but nothing special. Most of the tracks did a good job of serving as background noise, the important characters had a recognizable theme, and none of the music ever actively irritated me. I'm sure that I'm going to have music from Sankaku playing in the background of this video, so you can make your own judgments there. Overall, while none of the music is going to make it into my playlist, I liked it. And one more thing I have to mention before getting into the meat of this review is the translation work. Sankaku was originally Japanese, so obviously if I'm going to read it, it needed to be made into English. There were two things that were made abundantly clear to me within five minutes of actually starting up. Firstly, the translation style is a little less literal and more interpretive. And secondly, the translators are almost certainly native English speakers, which is actually a lot less common than it really should be. I was very pleasantly surprised by all this. See, most visual novels are Japanese, and there are times when the translation work in otherwise fantastic products is kinda shoddy. Here's the thing, Japanese and English are very different languages, both structurally and culturally. That's why machine translations are damn near unintelligible, and human translations can often sound robotic or awkward. Sometimes the most direct translation of a word just sounds weird when it otherwise flows perfectly in the native language. Additionally, I feel like this interpretive style was necessary with Sankaku in particular. There are a ton of jokes, puns, and memes in this visual novel. Humor is a massive part of its identity, and so much of it simply wouldn't show through in a direct translation. I mean, a pun in one language is probably not going to make sense in any other. This also ties into the fact that I believe that the translators are native speakers. They have a strong grasp of western internet and meme culture, and these jokes are constant throughout the entirety of Sankaku. At several points, they'll use a phrase that I never thought I'd see in a Japanese visual novel because of how uniquely western it is. Nani the fuck. See, nani is a Japanese word that's used as an exclamation of shock and generally translates to what. In English-speaking weebdom, the word has kind of become a meme in a way that I'm sure doesn't exist in Japan. So Nani the fuck is an extension of that meme and that probably wouldn't make any sense to a non-native speaker. These kind of things are so common in Sankaku and I just really wanted to praise the translators here. 
They added so much to the final product, and I hope they get the recognition they deserve. Okay, now let's move on to the story. Earlier I mentioned that there is a lot of humor, but I absolutely did not do it justice. Sankaku is all about the jokes and the memes. There are a lot of self-referential jokes and fourth wall breaks. They make fun of anime and visual novel tropes, even as they're actively engaging in them. They'll even do things like change the music or a character's name tag to make a joke. There are multiple occasions where they actually have deliberate spelling errors just for humor. At one point, they even point out that a character was so devastated by the events of the scene that he temporarily had a different voice actor. They'll constantly reference the fact that they're in an Erege visual novel. Dick jokes abound. It gave me some serious Deadpool vibes, and I love it. Sankaku is absolutely hilarious. Seriously, it's probably the funniest visual novel I've ever read. I get that the humor won't appeal to everyone, and I'll admit that not every joke landed, but I think it was absolutely fantastic. But that being said, it still has a story to tell, and I have to say it's actually pretty good. So, like other romantic visual novels with a cast of characters, Sankaku has multiple routes you can take based on the dialogue choices you make, not unlike a choose-your-own-adventure book. Though in this case, it's more like a choose-your-own waifu. There are six potential love interests for our protagonist Sasuke, though only four of them actually have fleshed-out stories. Unfortunately, two of the routes are really just an excuse to get a few adult scenes with some of the supporting characters. Let me quickly introduce the main cast of characters. There's the president of the otaku club, only ever known as Prez, who is obsessed with shitty mobile games. No, he's not one of the love interests. There's Kara, the western weeb who's obsessed with cosplay and Japanese history. She's one of the characters with a shortened story. There's Akane, who's obsessed with yaoi, or boy love, which is exactly what you think it is. She's the other one who didn't get a proper route. And the four main love interests are as follows. There's Maho, the childhood best friend who is highly competitive and addicted to fighting games. There's Sheena, the pervy chick who likes adult games just a little too much. I mean, I'm a total perv, but even I think it's excessive. There's Nanadu, Sasuke's stepsister. She's a bit of a ditz and enjoys the whole bonding through messing with your friends dynamic. And finally, there's Suzu, the sweet innocent one who just so happens to be Sasuke's biological sister. God damn it, Japan! So, as I continue talking about the plot, I do want you to keep in mind that the humor, the jokes, the memes, this is all going on throughout all of this. I meant it when I said that humor is a part of the core identity of Sankaku, and even though there are serious story elements, that shouldn't be forgotten. So the way the different routes work is you start out on the common route, which is basically the introduction to the characters and setting. If you've read other visual novels, this will be nothing new to you. From there, based on your choices, you'll be put on either the sister route or the love route, which is the first part where the story properly deviates. And from there, that's when you'll eventually lock into one character route. There's only one ending per character, so no bad endings. And I guess I should also mention for all the pervs out there that there's no harem ending either. The characters themselves each have a defining obsession, and at the start, it kind of feels like that's their entire personality. However, as you progress along each route, you'll start to see more and more actual personness with each of them. You'll start to see each one of their flaws, virtues, and insecurities, which is something that could have easily fallen by the wayside. I don't want to get into spoiler territory, so you're just going to have to kind of trust me on this one. As the title of the visual novel implies, there are love triangles involved. The characters involved will depend on whether you're on the sister route or the love route. I'm actually pretty conflicted about this. On the one hand, I like how the writers explored the idea of the protagonist's actions actually having an impact on the rest of the characters. In most choose-your-own waifu-type visual novels, the other love interests just kind of carry on with their lives like normal when you don't choose them. In Sankaku, the initial path he's on, be it sister or love, has Sasuke bond with two of the characters, and there's a natural progression where it makes sense no matter which one he ends up with. But when he chooses one, the other is going to get hurt, and I really like that. Well, I don't like seeing a character that I like feel sad, but I like it in a literary sense. It's a surprisingly mature topic for a visual novel that slings around so many dick jokes. On the other hand, I feel like they really didn't hit the mark with it. The intent was there, but the execution was lacking. It almost feels like they were too apprehensive to fully dive into the love triangle dynamic, and as a result, the conclusion to these love triangles often left me disappointed. In one case, when one girl realizes she's lost Sasuke and that he loves another, she's understandably very upset. So she resolves to bottle up her feelings, keep her sadness to herself, and be supportive of the two because even though she's heartbroken, she legitimately cares for both of them and wants them to be happy. That sounds pretty good, right? Well it is, but they did absolutely nothing with it. This is good character development, but they just didn't properly nurture it. They just threw it out there and forgot about it. It probably wouldn't piss me off so much if it didn't have so much potential. I wanted to see where these emotions would take her. I wanted to see what conflicts and problems it could cause because suppressing your emotions really isn't a healthy way to process them. I still want to see that, but it just didn't happen. 
In fact, only one of the four routes had a conclusion to the love triangle that actually felt satisfying. Again, no spoilers, but the rejected girl and Sasuke had a face-to-face -face where they properly came to terms with their situation. I really got that sense of, we're never going to be together and that hurts. I'm heartbroken. I'm not okay, but I will be in time and I'm happy that we still get to be in each other's lives as friends. I really wish I could go into this more, but that would spoil things. To me, that was the only route where it felt like that loose end was fully put to rest, where I didn't get the feeling that the rejected girl was just going to wallow in misery for the rest of her life. It was actually really good, but that just made it even more obvious that the other routes were lacking. Sankaku definitely deserves praise for trying to tell a real story instead of just coasting on its humor, which it really could have done. But I feel like if they were going to give that extra effort, take that risk, they should go all out with it. I don't want to take away from how good it is that they're willing to actually do proper storytelling, but I also don't want to say that everything is just fine when it could have been so much better. Now I have to talk about that ever-present elephant in the room, the adult content. Viewers in my channel know that I don't really care if a game or visual novel has adult stuff in it as long as the product is good, but I understand that other people aren't the same way. The sex scenes in Sankaku follow the same general tone as the rest of the visual novel. Now, they do have story significance since the scenes usually mark an escalation or important moment in the relationship. That being said, they're still pretty lighthearted and in some cases pretty funny. Sankaku is a huge meme fest and even though the sex is a little more on the serious side, they're still willing to make dumb jokes here and there. I mean, at one point the girl Sasuke is with says the following, I thought if you came now, the screen would fade to black and the next scene would be tomorrow morning. This was referencing two Edige tropes in a fairly clever way. On the one hand, in visual novels after a sex scene, it usually does just cut right to the next day. On the other hand, the protagonists of these types of visual novels usually have inhuman levels of stamina and next to no, um, recovery time in between rounds. You're still going to be laughing during these scenes. And as for the sex itself, I know that I made a joke earlier about the fact that, well, Japan can be kinda weird and Japanese edage can be very weird. However, Sankaku actually surprised me with how vanilla it was. Seriously, the characters didn't do anything particularly strange or kinky. All of it was stuff that I could imagine any sexually active couple doing. And again, for me, it doesn't matter one way or another, but I can see this being good for people who might feel uncomfortable with sex scenes. Even I cringe a bit when I see some of the really weird shit that Edege can produce, so I definitely believe that this would be a good visual novel for those who are a little more hesitant than me. So overall, what do I think? Now, I hate traditional review scores. I don't feel like they actually mean anything in the long run. Reviews are really only meant for one question that I'll ask and answer right now. Is Sankaku Renai Love Triangle Trouble worth your money? And if not, what will make it worth your money? You can get Sankaku Renai for $29.99 or your regional equivalent. In my humble opinion, it is worth your money at full price, but just barely. I really liked it. It was funny, the story was surprisingly good, and I genuinely enjoyed every second of it. But the problems I mentioned with the story stuck with me, and I was very disappointed to learn that two of the girls didn't have real routes to explore. These things are what's keeping me from giving an enthusiastic worth your money rating. I still found it to be worth $30, but if you're hesitant, it may be worth waiting for a sale. Either way, I definitely think that Sankaku Renai should be on your reading list. Thanks for watching. You may have noticed that I've actually been uploading somewhat consistent lately. And that's because I actually want to see what I can do with this channel, both in terms of quality and growth. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like, a comment, or both. And if you want to see more, that subscribe button is always there. Every bit of interaction really does help get my content in front of more people, and I appreciate it more than you know. Well, with all that being said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.